Hello all, Rick here with a video covering a prequel to the Expanse series. While the show may be finished with its six seasons, Telltale Games and Deck Nine Games have brought forward a story that follows some events in the years prior to the series. Now, disclaimer, I was flown out to LA to experience the video game itself, as well as get some time to explore some props from the show, and that was a fantastic experience and a lot of fun. So while I'm going to remain objective, I feel it's best to simply address the lore and setting of the game, rather than jump in with a review. I will give my thoughts later on in the video if you are interested, but for now let's take a look at the time the game takes place in. The Expanse game is set seven years before the beginning of the series, placing it in 2343, and it follows the life of the Belter Kamina drummer before she turns up in the show, which the game sets itself as a prequel to. The character was greatly expanded in the shows, effectively a merger from several roles from the books, and as such, Drummer has this area of her backstory that is mostly unwritten, and it is into this spot these chapters fall. Assuming you know what a belter is, but if not, it is a collective name for those who live among the asteroids and outer planets of the Sol system. While Earth and Mars are separate worlds, the Belters are often the labourers caught in the middle, trying to eke out a living while supplying these two powers. Rather than following the political movers and shakers of the Expanses series that shaped the interplanetary events of the show, the Telltale game will focus on a more personal level, the crew of the one ship. The characters aboard it, and the numerous different factions are less represented in their entirety and more in the diverse origins of the crew of the Artemis. So, what do we know of Kamina Drummer? Well, she was born on Ceres Station, where she worked as a dockhand for her early life until she met Anderson Dawes. She signed on to Anderson Dawes' OPA faction, and acted as a high-ranking member within the organisation even at a young age, where she worked alongside him in establishing his own goals. However, over time she grew disillusioned with Dawes' ego and violent methods, beginning to drift away from him, earning herself a bounty in the process. Eventually she found herself teaming up with Fred Johnson after he too left Dawes and began his own OPA faction housed on Tycho Station. It was here that she would rise to the head of security for Tycho, a position we would find her in at the start of Season 2. And, as a side note, when it comes to the Outer Planets Alliance, the most important thing to remember is that there are multiple viewpoints on just what a Belter form of government should look like, and much internal clashing between the factions, although not as much as we would see in later seasons of the show. Originally it was made to sound as if Drummer had left and immediately signed up with Johnson, However, this game seems to place itself after her departure from Ceres Station, but before she became re-involved with the OPA factions. In this time, she has signed on with the salvage crew of the Artemis, a Belter vessel captained by a former UNN Earther, Captain Cox. Cox very much still wears his achievements as a matter of pride, even after leaving the Inner Planets, although he still bears a strong streak of superiority about him that does him no favours in the belt. Drummer serves as the executive officer, the second in command who heads up the missions in the field. Alongside these two, there is the cranky old ship's pilot, Khan, the grouchy grandma of the crew, and two more belters, the twins, Arlen and Rayan Morozov. These two are loyal to one another, but one is far more brash than the other. Maya Castillo is a former Martian Marine and engineer who has left the MCR in favour of a life on the belt and is someone who sees the beauty in space travel even amid the dangers. Virgil Marx is the ship's medic and a gifted surgeon, one whose skill set would better serve his career at a far more prestigious location but clearly there is more behind his presence than first appears. In terms of events unfolding at this time, according to the chronology of the Expanse, Bars is about to uncover the protomolecule on Phoebe and set up its station there. 
So this is all taking place before the beginnings of the spread of that research and experimentation. Characters like James Holden are still in the United Nations Navy, and Alex in the MCRN. Amos is more of a wild card as ever, so don't expect cameos from the series regulars. Although, who knows. At the introduction of the first mission, the Artemis is running low on morale and money due to recently poor hauls, but they have a tip on a wreckage of the UNN Urshanabi, an Earther vessel hauling something of value, and it has yet to send out a distress call despite the catastrophic damage. They have a lead on it before the UNN sends out a search party, so it looks like an ambitious but easy haul. Of course, this game is chapter one of a five-part series that will be released in waves every two weeks. This was done because previous Telltale titles had quite a long delay between their chapters, and this smaller time frame better mirrors the airtime of a streamed series. So, the game itself is run on the Unreal Engine, and one of the new Telltale's initial wave of titles created by the studio Deck Nine. If you're unfamiliar with the Telltale formula, they basically create narrative experiences with a strong focus on player choice and dialogue. Options you select will result in different outcomes along the same overall tale, meaning that you can replay the series and theoretically have an entirely different scenario unfold, with even different people being alive or dead by the end. After talking to the devs, it sounds like this title is an attempt to push that even further than prior ones, with a experience that keeps on branching, rather than focusing back to a single or limited conclusion. The chapter I played was, pun intended, expansive, in a way that Telltale games are not usually known for. For ages, the formula has been to explore a room with a handful of interactables, and then the scale here has been opened up to a larger canvas, with the wreckage of the Urshanabi being the centrepiece this time. There are hidden corridors, salvage and dialogue hidden away on faraway scraps, and you don't just have to follow the quest objectives. However, this has led the chapters to be shorter overall, at least in my experience, and I took my time. Although I cannot say if I uncovered everything. Additionally, it's hard to tell from this initial chapter if the game truly is as open to different paths as it appears, considering it was only about two hours into the story. But that's something time will reveal. One feature I did enjoy was the smooth transitions between mag boot walking to free floating in microgravity. The first time I noticed the gravity shifting was when I climbed a ramp on the bridge, and instead of tackling it by hoisting your legs higher as you would stairs, the drummer's perspective simply shifted and the room tilted, and she remained upright, now at an incline to her previous position. Then it clicked that, oh yeah, the only G I have to worry about is this one right here. Pause for laughter. Aside from this, I did encounter moments where Drummer would get stuck on something in corridors, but this was nothing that could not be overcome, just a bumping the gameplay. The animations and lighting in particular are phenomenal, and that's a plus on a game that attempts to capture the cinematic feels of the show. Overall, I'm going to be playing this when I can, I might even add a playthrough to the channel, but until then I've been Rick. And fly safe and farewell.